Hi, I'm Richard Sever from Cold Spring Harbor Lab and BioArchive. With me, I have Don Cleveland from UCSD. Don, welcome to Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, thanks. I've been, many, been here many times, uh, starting in 1976. Yeah, so, mm. I, yeah, so I hear you, you, you think you may have the record for no, the longest time. No, no, I, th I thought attending. I might have, but no, no, there were others. Uh, 1973 is the, of the ones I've seen, uh, the, the, is, is, the, is the low number. Oh, I see. Yeah, right, so right. I'm, I'm one of the late arrivals in oh, 1976. Okay. 1976. Yeah. Well, you may yeah. actually have another record because it struck me that looking at the abstract book that you have perhaps more abstracts at this meeting than any, <laughs> uh, anyone else. Ah. I think I counted seven, so I guess it's been a good year. Uh, it's a good year, and uh, my, uh, my former postdocs are still including me on the work now that they're, oh, right. now so that so they're, in, the now that they're independent. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you talked this morning about um, the centromere and its um, identity and inheritance across mitosis, and um, uh, I found that fascinating. And what was kind of interesting is it sounds like it's perhaps one of the very few things we can all agree is actually epigenetically inherited. Yes, so truly epigenetic in the old uh, definition of epigenetics, mm -hmm. uh, where it was truly heritable, uh -huh. and heritable in the, now in a, on an evolutionary time scale, and uh, defined by a structure, DNA protein structure, chromatin structure, not defined by the underlying DNA sequence. So, so if it's not the DNA sequence that is telling you where a centromere is, what is it? It's this, uh, uh, there's a f an unusual histone, uh, histone mm -hmm. H3, it's called centromere protein A, discovered in 1985 by Bill Earnshaw. And we now recognize from yeast to man, there is this unusual histone variant and that it is the mark of it's always at active centromeres, and uh, in almost every organism that's studied, it is the epigenetic mark. And so chromatin built, assembled with it knows how to, uh, to direct its own replication adjacent to it. Uh-huh, uh, uh, and so, so, so... So you do have, so we have this really odd thing that the basic unit for chromosome inheritance is not conserved it's not as part a sequence. Of the yeah. exactly. Yes, not right. part. Of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, the genes, the sequence matters, but for the but for the centromeres, except for budding yeast, uh, the centromeres, the underlying DNA sequence is neither necessary nor sufficient. Mm -hmm. It's just not part of the uh, uh, of the uh, action. And SEMP, SEMP A is necessary and sufficient. Ne SEMP A loaded into chromatin can be can become a centromere, and when it does, it knows how to 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 direct its own replication. There, oh. and we learned that from a very unusual genetic source, uh, oh. which is humans. Right. Uh, the d discovery in humans of the acquisition of the movement of a chromosome occasionally in, 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 in an individual, where the chromosome moved from its original location to a new location. Right. And now we know that it, that uh, that new location is heritable itself for at least two generations. Right. So right. it's what. <laughs> the basic unit of uh, genetics here, the centromere, is uh, itself not really specified uniquely by, by DNA sequence, but rather epigenetically by this uh, complex, chromatin complex, containing a, a funny, uh, funny histone H3. Right, so it's a, form, it's a version of, of histone H3, which is in nucleosomes dotted across the whole of your regular DNA. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, when, so, obviously, the, the SEMP-A itself must be inherited across replication of the genome and then division of the cell. And I guess, you know, one might imagine that immediately, you know, you replicate the DNA and then you have to put a whole load more sempe on, but it And that's, like what, that's what everybody did think. But we, we did that uh, now several years ago to, uh, to use a marked variant of, of SEMP A in which we had loaded it with a suicide enzyme that would then take a fluor, a fluorescent compound, and covalently now link it to itself. So you could, uh, you could uh, then mark the centromere protein A that existed at any particular time in the cell. And you could be blinded to the old stuff. You just saw the new stuff. And we asked, so when, does, when is cent are these centromeres replicated? I mean, we all knew DNA, it's replicated during S phase. So of course, centromeric chromatin is going to be replicated in S phase. But by using these marked molecules, time marked molecules of centromere protein A, no. No, the molecules are present in the cells, in the nuclei, but they're not added. They're just sitting there. They're not added during S phase. They're not added after S phase. 
They're not added during mitosis when the centromeres are truly used. They're added right at the beginning of the next cell cycle. So, so the beginning you, of G1 phase. And the then. beginning of G1 of the subsequent cycle. So we have a disconnect between centromeric DNA replication and centromeric chromatin replication, replication, or at least the epigenetic mark of chromatin replication. And I think that came as a huge surprise to everybody. And it was one of the happy coincidences, uh, convergence in science, where several teams found it in multiple organisms almost simultaneously. And so uh, the idea that you'd have this good disconnect between replication uh, and chromatin uh, uh, replication, uh, that actually uh, was accepted quite quickly, mm -hmm. even though it seems, how could this be true? Yeah. So, uh, so now, actually, I think it is universally agreed to that it, that's really what happens. Uh, why do we do it that way? Why do we have functional centromeres that have half the maximal uh, amount of this centromeric chromatin uh -huh. uh, as the functional mitotic centromeres? Uh, well, we don't know that. We don't know. Yeah. And, how, uh, how, and then how, how is that really... Uh, uh, how, how is that really replicated in early uh, G1 of the next interphase? Uh, we know molecules. We know there's a chaperone uh, that uh, uh, shepherds the, uh, this centromeric histone variant, it cha chaperones it for assembly, blocks it from assembling through most of the cell cycle. But the details have really been, how do you know where do you put the new uh, centromere protein A? And you put it adjacent to the old ones. Uh, in the human centromeres, they're megabases long, uh -huh. but have only about 400 molecules of this uh, unusual histone variant. Really so surprising. they're really substoichiometrically loaded. And then how do you know where to put the new ones? And how, what's the mark that really recruits the loading machinery there? And that's really, in, at least in my view, that's really an unsolved the question. Unsolved question. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, in terms of kind of like really mapping what a centromere looks like, um, it, you know, it sounds like there being various models of the histone optima, and is it a pemosome? Is that you know, are there dimers? All these various yes. things, and it's you, you've been mapping this more closely than anyone's done before across all the chromosomes, is that Well, correct? so for, in the, in the mammalian context, yes, I'm mapping it across all the chromos the centromeres of all the chromosomes. And you were quite right that there have now been several prominently put forward models for what the structure of centromeric chromatin is, uh, beginning with a hemisome, half a typical nucleosome with only one copy of each of the four histones instead of two. And then that wraps DNA right-handedly rather than left-handedly, like uh, most, uh, most DNA. Others have argued that it's a hexamer. But I think the field is nearly, nearly, not completely, but nearly mm. now coalesced around, no, it's really an octameric and nucleosomal structure in which the typical histone H3 is replaced by centromere protein A. And that they make octameric nucleosomes that are pretty similar to the conventional nucleosomes. Not completely, though. The DNA is not wound quite the same way. But it's still wound in the same direction. But it's, it's a left-handed left uh, the, the, the wind. And I think, and, and with uh, one or two exceptions, uh, there is a consensus that, that it really is an octameric nucleosome. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, SEMP A is not the only protein sitting there. You, mean, you mentioned um, SEMP B, and then there's regular yes. H3 so, there. Yes, yeah, so there, there's one, uh, again, the birth of uh, uh, mammalian centromere components came from the, uh, their identification of the first three in 1985 by Bill Earnshaw, and he mm -hmm. you know, named them cleverly SEMP A, <laughs> B, and C. And centromere protein B, turns out, it's, uh, it, it's actually the there are now at least uh, 50 different components that are parts of human centromeres or the structures that are assembled onto the centromeres, mm -hmm. the kinetochores that now, uh, that now confer the functional characteristics for chromosome movement in mitosis. And so of those 50 components, only one of them is a, uh, is a DNA sequence specific binding protein, and it is centromere protein B. So what's that recognizing then? It makes a, a short sequence of 17 base pair sequence that sits among the repetitive DNAs that are at the core of our, our, our typical centromeres. And yet, the astounding thing about centromere protein B, uh, depressing for some, astounding for others, is that it's not essential. 
So you can, you can delete it from mice, they're pretty normal. And as, as was discussed at the, in the opening evening, it actually is missing from some primates. So the experiment's actually been done broadly, evolutionarily. You don't need the DNA sequence specific binding right. protein, although we have it, and it, bind, and it binds to all of our centromeres except one, the Y centromere. Right. There are no binding sites for it on the Y centromere. Right, and so if you look at, I mean, obviously Y chromosome is different, but are there the, features the, of that that make it evident that it's? The Y chromosome is different because it, it has this repetitive region, it encodes very few genes. Well, it's sort of small, but it's not the smallest chromosome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, the, it's the funniest one in terms of sequence, but uh, yeah, it's, and it's centromere, uh, one, of, one of the, actually, it's one of the, uh, well, maybe amusing parts of the Y centromere. Uh, it was the first of the human centromeres that was uh, computationally put together they have these repetitive alphoid DNA, so-called alphoid DNA repeats in them, which means it's when the genome, the human genome was first published in the early 2000s, there were actually 24 enormous gaps in the sequence, mm -hmm. even though we said we had the whole sequence. And the 24 gaps were the, the 24 human centromeres, the 22 autosomes and the X and the Y. And these are gaps you've been filling in. No, 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 no. A, a, a computational, a very talented computational person at. Uh, University of California, uh, Santa Cruz, has filled in the first two, the X and the Y, and she published those two years ago. And uh, the, uh, for, the, for the guys out there, you know, the thing about the Y and its centromere, they're not all the same size. Right. <laughs> and uh, and they, they really vary quite a lot. And I, and I remember I told that story, I introduced uh, one of the great, one of the well-known sequencers, Craig Venter. Uh -huh. uh, at a meeting where there, there were two or 3,000 people in the audience, he was the keynote speaker, and I introduced him and I, I pointed out that uh, it had just been put together, the human Y chromosome, and that they're not all the same size. And so, so Venter, Venter has one of the most ge sequenced genomes in the world, and I said, well, I'm gonna tell him something about his genome he doesn't know, uh, which right. is, uh, he's got one of the smallest the Y chromosomes. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I hope the audience... So how did that go down? Oh, yeah, well, that way, it, it made for an, uh, a, an interesting dinner after the talk, yes. It, uh, <laughs> uh, no, he's a, he's a very uh, opinionated uh, uh, guy, but he can take it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So how, is, I mean, one of the things that I was interested in your talk was you talked about phasing of these different proteins within the century. Yes, so that? we, uh, I, I think we all thought that they would, that the, uh, the, the nucleosomes of centromere protein A would probably be uh, partially phased because there is this DNA sequence specific binding protein, centromere protein mm -hmm. B, and wherever some direct binding partner is bound, you know, you can't make a nucleosome there, so you'd probably assemble your nucleosome adjacent to it, and that's true. But then we deleted centromere protein B from those cells and let them, uh, let them go for 100 generations. And the phasing is exactly the, the same. same. So there's, what, so it's however it's done, it's- uh, There's something else. It, 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 yeah, so <laughs> they're, well, they're, they, the maintenance of the phasing really doesn't require that. So uh, maybe it didn't need it to start, but we don't know that. We, we know that we, it, we don't need it to maintain it. So right. it's- uh, hmm. So that's where the big question is, I guess. That's if one you've of got the- this, If you've got this gap between G1 when you, and, and the, the, uh, you know, well, the so they're, they're added, the so they're re-added in, in G1, and there they, they, they are phased, and, and we're, uh, and, and then uh, for us the question was, well, okay, they're added, uh, you have full, the, the fullest complement of centromere protein A added at early G1, uh, but even then, the, the apparent, bi the binding sites are unsaturated, and so if you raise the concentration of centromere protein A, you can raise the level of, the, the occupancy of those sites, but the phasing looks the same, uh, whether you have low levels or high levels, so they, uh, we're thinking, okay, something does that. But even more so, what happens, how, uh, one thing that we had demonstrated, again, several years ago, that if you use uh, fluorescently tagged subunits that were tagged at a, at a known time, already assembled at centromeres, okay and ask, well, okay, now the DNA replication machinery goes across those, you now have twice as many centromeres, DNA replication. What happened to the old molecules of centromere protein A and the old chromatin? And the answer is, 
it's 100% still on the two daughters. Half of it, half of the old stuff went to one daughter, uh, Centromere, and half went to the other. And it, so it's exactly 50-50? It's exactly 50-50, as best we can tell, yeah. So what's, what's, what's sitting in the space the, the space that remains until you start at, at, at so G1 phase. It's, 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 uh, it was long predicted, and I think we've now demonstrated, it's, uh, it's nucleosomes of histone H3.1. Okay. The, uh, the, uh, the histone H3 variant that's added during DNA repl replication. So it, it, you, the, some of the SIMP-A spots get covered by uh, 3.1, and then those must be swapped out at the end of mitosis when mm -hmm. the new SIMP-A is added. And again, how that's swapped out, oh, there's nothing known about that. What, right. what, what evicts the old ones and then puts the new oh, ones? Enormous. Oh, no, 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 no. Not, not known, not known. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it, it is one, I wondered if, if it is one clue related to another interesting aspect that you, you, you said in your talk, which was that this um, SIMP-A is not just on the centromeres. You see it yeah, uh, so you know, sort of dotted uh, on we, the whole chromosome, but it's different at different times, is that right? So it, it's, it, you find it, and uh, Jean-Vier von Musny at uh, Institute Curie was the first to really show that it really does go on to, it, during early G1, a portion of it goes on to the arms, probably, uh, chromosome arms, probably as a mistake. It's just uh -huh. there's a lot of chromatin out there, and it's probably just put on uh, as a mistake. And if you raise the concentration of centromere protein A, as does happen in a variety of human tumors, then you splatter even more of it on the chromosome arms. Uh -huh. And so you have these funny uh, oct octameric nucleosomes of centromere protein A just spotted around. And what we did was then to demonstrate that actually they go, they, they go in a site selectivity. So there are a whole bunch of these sites on each of the chromosome arms where you just see an enrichment of little simp A right there or right there or right there. And uh, we thought, huh, that's weird. And then we watched as they, the cells go across S phase, the sites on the arms get removed. Right. So the, the stuff that was probably accidentally and incorrectly put on these arm sites gets removed, but the stuff at the centromeres, uh, the old centromere protein A goes to each of the two daughter centromeres quantitatively, and uh, it, oh, with the, almost exactly the same site selectivity as it had before. So somehow the DNA replication machine goes through, it removes the, it has to remove the old, the old nucleosomes in order to get the replication machine through, and then it puts the old centromere protein A back onto the centromeres at very high fidelity. Right, so there's a cleanup process. But there's a cleanup on, on the arms. On the yeah. arms. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's, a, it's not a complete cleanup, it's a partial cleanup. It, some of it's removed and some of it's just spread out so that there's no concentrated sites. Right. So it's, and, it's, and indeed, that came up today as part of the unsolved question about what's, why is some of it sort of removed and why some of it is just sort of spread out. And I think, well, at a first level, I think it, it is, it's probably uh, the, the, the DNA replication machine. It does have affinity for the old histones that it had to strip off. And there's a, you know, it's a big machine, and that it just sort of puts them right back on, but it does so imperfectly. Uh -huh. It's just so a, eh, put it back on. You don't put it in exactly the same site, but at the centromeres, where the sequences are repeated, mm -hmm. now you don't have to put it on at exactly the same site to, in, ex, to put it on at exactly the same sequence, right. because the sequences are repetitive. But on the arms, if you put it on imprecisely, you'll just spread out. If there was a site selective place, you'll just spread it out. Right, right. And you don't do it all that perfectly either. So you, you lose some and you spread out the rest. Uh -huh. But what you don't have are peaks of centromere protein A that might then begin to act like uh, a new centromere and recruit the, remain, the, uh, the additional components. Right, so that's the real reason for that's, this, is to stop that's what, creating that's, that's what we, th by that, accident. Uh, that's what we're arguing, yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll see. This is the first time I've presented this uh, work at a, meet, at a meeting like this. And so I could see there were, you know, there were people who agreed. Yeah. There were people who didn't <laughs> agree fully, oh, which, is, which is the way science, science yeah, always is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's great to see um, unpublished data being discussed at a meeting like this. I, I hope that one day we'll see it on bioarchive. But oh, I see, um, on bioarchive. Well, I was going to say, that's there, was a, there was an editor from Cell in the audience. I right. was hoping that she would <laughs> okay. see it, but okay, yes, well, yeah, you know. yeah.
Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, it was. It, it was. It sounds like there's um there's a lot of work to be done in working out how it gets on and how it gets off. So. I expect to see another seven abstracts at the next <laughs> meeting. It's been lovely my, talking my to you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank much. you very much.